Welcome back. Well, Kevin Sullivan, Sullivan was a forensic detective spending 27 years in the police force. He investigated over 40 murders and attended major disasters, including the 1997 Threadbow landslide disaster and also the 2003 waterfall train disaster. Ultimately, he developed PTSD and was medically discharged. Kevin's healing process led him back to his first love, country music, proving that it's never too late to follow your dreams. It's now his full-time job and he's just released a brand new single. Let's take a listen. Kevin Sullivan, I'm just going to call him Kev, joins us live from Durack in Western Australia. Hey Kev, who are these people? Are they your fans? Are they your roadies? Are they your backup singers? <laughs> who are those little munchkins there? They're a little bit of both. Larry, hi Larry, hi, hi Sally. Larry, Hello. Hi, Sally. Uh, this is KJ, he's 12, Cha Cha's 9, Jet 6, and we're on our Sully Van tour all around Australia, actually. Oh, absolutely magic, absolutely magic. Now, Kev, just on a serious note, almost for three decades you were a police officer and you had to deal with some very intense situations, death, destruction and tragedy. So for you, how did PTSD present itself? Look, it was, it was slowly at first, Sally. I was probably in denial like a lot of PTSD sufferers and uh, then I had an accident. I broke my right humerus coming home from work and I broke it in multiple places while I was off work. So all of a sudden, all those hundreds of crime scenes, those terrible scenes I'd, I'd attended, all came flooding back and sort of hit me at once. And, uh, you know, I, I became very emotional. I couldn't watch TV without crying. I was very angry at the world. I'd been a bit of an extrovert and I'm back there now, but I shut down and, uh, you know, I, socially, I didn't want to go out. I'd wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning and uh, uh, people with, who suffer from PTSD and, and mental health go to dark places. My dark places were those forensic crime scenes and, and I didn't like the person I became either, so it was, it was pretty hard to manage it all. Yeah. Uh, talk us through how music helped you move forward. Look, music's always been a part of my life, Larry, and I played music all through my days in the police with bands. But, um, now I'm, I'm back on the road, I'm back to my old self. I still manage my PTSD, uh, but I've been an inpatient for PTSD and uh, one of my psychologists said, you need to get back in writing music. So I wrote a song about the waterfall train disaster where sadly seven people lost their lives. And, and that song, um, you know, it connects with a lot of people who suffer from trauma and depression. And I've had people all around Australia and all around the world contact me about that song, Unknown People, and it's just sort of nice to connect it. And I'm slowly getting back into life and this journey has been hard. I still manage my PTSD, but, but I'm getting there. You've recorded in, in Nashville and co-written a song with Casey Chambers' dad, Bill. So what inspires your music? What do you write about? I write about things that connect with me. And uh, the song I wrote with Bill Chambers, who's fantastic, was a song called High Country Snows about the high country horseman, very much man from Snowy River. And we filmed the music video down at Mary Jig. But uh, I wrote a song about pilgrimage, which is about Anzac Day. I'd been to Gallipoli. I write about people, about causes, about issues that connect with me. And uh, we finish our show with Outback Australia, which is a song about this great country. My, my latest song, Spend the Kids' Inheritance, although it's a bit tongue in cheek, I'm not really mm. doing that. Um, it's, it's more about living life. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm doing. My forensic career taught me that we're not here a long time. So uh, I write about life and uh, it's good to be on this really musical journey. It's never too late to chase your dream either. Oh, that's a great thing to, to remind us about. You've been on the road, you're touring with your wife, and those gorgeous kids there. Now, but you've managed to avoid lockdown. You're sort of zigging and zagging. Uh, there must be some wonderful highlights. What, what, what has been the major highlight, would you say? I think, Larry, just performing with these kids. We've done 27,000 kilometres. We've been very lucky, very blessed. And I've got two older daughters in Sydney who are in lockdown, so it's very personal to us. But to be performing on stage live with the kids, they sing. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some wonderful places. We were at Kakadu last week. We saw the Indigenous artwork dating back thousands of years. But it's just nice to connect my songs and connect with people and the stories behind it. I'm an ambassador for the Children's Tumor Foundation too, and a big highlight was raising a couple of grand back in Maroochydore, yeah. and it is, it is the Children's Tumor Foundation Awareness Month. So, yep. look, it's just playing music and playing live music. A lot of places we've been, Larry, haven't had live music for 12 to 18 months, and uh, yeah. they get very emotional when they see our little Sully Band family show. So, it's oh, nice to inspire people. Yeah.
Uh, those kids have been smiling from start to finish, mate. They're very, very proud of you and what you're doing. Good to <laughs> talk to you. Yeah, we're at our yeah, It's very warm it. here. Oh, Thanks, God. guys. See you, kids. Thanks, Larry. Bye. Thanks, Larry. Bye. 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 Well, to find out where Kevin Sullivan is touring next, just head over to our website. Well, coming up for you, we're expecting...